You don't need to like data centers or networks or technology, but nobody can escape the benefits of digital infrastructure. Hello everyone and welcome to the Tech Capital. I'm João Marx Lima and it's with immense pleasure that I'm coming to you from London at this beautiful venue just yards away from the River Thames. This river crosses the British capital and has for more than 3,000 years been the beating heart of this country's economy. But the economy today is much more than rivers and oceans. It is primarily fueled by data. And like the River Thames that flows into the North Sea and then the Atlantic Ocean, merging with other oceans, linking all shores across the planet, the data economy is global and borderless. From 2010 to 2020, the amount of data created, captured, copied and consumed across the world increased from 1.2 trillion gigabytes to 59 trillion gigabytes, an almost 5,000% growth in just a decade and things are not going to slow down. This giant tsunami is generating almost unlimited opportunities across the digital space. From the subsea cable at the bottom of the ocean to the peering point at the shore, the inland data center, and then all the networks associated with a modern hosting hierarchy and service provision. We have, for example, seen in the data center space, just in the last few months of this year, an average of $10 billion being invested a month into acquiring assets. A consolidation trend that is also not going to stop as private equity and other verticals grab a larger share of the data center sector, which today trades at an EBITDA of between 25 and in some cases more than 30 times multiples. On the hyperscaler front, hyperscalers are building more than ever before, especially as an answer to COVID-19. Take Microsoft for instance. Last year, when the first lockdown began in the Western world, Microsoft brought online 100 megawatts of data center horsepower in just two weeks to keep up with demand. And this demand has not reduced since, and it will not fade away once the pandemic is over. Edge computing continues to disrupt the marketplace. Cities that we haven't heard of before are becoming hubs for localized data storing and processing. But there are many, many examples of how fast the digital infrastructure space is moving. And saying that it's moving at the speed of light almost does not seem to make it fair. The truth is, we live in exponential times. Times of a lot of change. And times when we have the opportunity to shape not just our present, but the world that we want to leave to future generations. So, all this change and opportunity has really laid bare the foundations of why bringing the tech capital to life. Under the motto of You Lead, We Report, at the tech capital, we take the lead in the narrative of a sector that is changing the world's geoeconomics. The tech capital is a digital media platform providing valuable content and data covering investments and players in the global digital infrastructure sector. As the focus of data centers evolves to land, property, digital parks and connected locations, site selection, investment and power, 
we follow the story but stray away from the headlines and engage with the real movers and shakers in this ever-changing but continuously exciting landscape. Our brand new website provides daily editorial news coverage of markets and movements from across the globe, as well as easy to access features, in-depth articles and analysis, opinion, video and podcast interviews with the business leaders, and all the attributes expected of a premier publication. Our focus is on data centers, cloud, edge computing, and digital infrastructure from fiber to towers, its investors, players, customers, and the absolutely very important green tech dynamic increasingly allied to the significant growth forecast for the industry over the next decade and beyond. So with that said, let me now invite you to have a very special glimpse at what the unique and groundbreaking Data Capital website looks like. This website is the fruit of a lot of research and studying of best practices of what a 21st century digital technology news platform should be. One of my favorite features is the dark mode, because at the tech capital we take sustainability very serious, and with dark mode we allow all our readers to save as much as 30% of energy whilst navigating through the website. We have built a platform that allows for you to easily find the right content for you. A website where you can save stories to read later and engage with other readers across commentary sections. We have invested in also bringing you one of the most complete audio-visual experiences the sector has seen, so you can expect a lot more surprises in this field. Subscribing to the Tech Capital is free and this automatically gives you access to premium content, because at the Tech Capital we believe everyone should have access to critical information. But for us, a launch should also be celebrated with you, our readers and viewers. So, although we cannot be all together in person at this time, we have a few guests that will be joining me shortly in a panel to discuss the state of the digital infrastructure economy. Here at the Tech Capital, we have pushed the boundaries of media to really bring you a fresh experience in a world that continues to evolve and reinvent itself. And we could not have done this at a more critical and pressing time. And we thank all our industry partners from across the world and we strongly believe in the future of this very exciting industry that is digital infrastructure. At the Tech Capital, you lead, we report. Congratulations on your new publication. Uh, you are the voice of change and, and the voice of, of uh, demand in, in exploring what are the new trends in the industry for the last uh, five or six years in your very short life as a, as a journalist. And uh, it's been a very, very exciting to, to listen to and watch uh, not only your podcast, but your, your uh, 
uh, your publications that you've made over the years. And uh, you've really kind of put a spotlight on to many, many important trends uh, for all of us to, to read about on a, on a weekly and monthly basis. So keep up the good work. Uh, we're excited to have uh, your new uh, venture out there and, and as a, a new voice for all of us in the industry to be guided by as we go forward. Hey everybody, Dean Nelson here from Infrastructure Masons. I wanted to take a minute and send a hearty congratulations out to Jao Lima and his team over at the Tech Capital. Congratulations on launching this new publication as well as this new media group. Independent journalism is so important to our industry. Without telling the story, and I'm talking about all sides of the story, people will gather the wrong conclusions. So what Jao Lima has done both in his career and what he's gonna be doing now is so critical. So thank you, Jao, for uh, what you've done in the past and what you're going to be doing in the future. Also, thank you for having me on the Great Business Mind podcast. That was a great conversation uh, to be able to walk through with you and, and spend some time and, and talk about really important topics. So I can't wait to see what's coming out in the magazine as well as what you're going to be publishing online. So all the best and thanks for including me. We move now to Tech Capital's first ever industry panel with three leading experts in the industry. Uh, I've got here with me Nicola Hayes, founder of Adjust Consulting. Uh, I've got Alex Rabbits, Managing Director of the European Data Center Association. And I've also got Guy Wilner, Chairman and CEO of iAccelerate. Um, guys, what does it feel like to be back in the room? Yeah, <laughs> amazing. 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 Very strange, but amazing. Uh, well, this is my first time to be in person, people, like since February last year. So it's been... I have to decide what to wear on my bottom hole instead of saying a giant bottom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, That's the suit. suit. Yeah, it's a lot. I've got a jacket on for the first time in 15 months. Yeah. Well, you're looking at those feet because mine's like you're wearing that kind of morning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but look, even though we went through the whole COVID thing, I mean, for the industry, this has been an exceptional year in terms of growth. What do you think was the most disruptive thing that has happened? Um, who wants to go first? Should I go? I mean, just yeah. acceleration. You know, we all knew with digital transformation that it, it was a one way street and it was going to carry on, but, but the speed of which things had to adapt. Um, you know, just in my other world, in education, for example, yes, we might have started doing a little bit of online learning. That could have taken another five to ten years. We've had no choice. We're not going to go backwards. We're not going to stay online teaching, but that will stay. So all of those things that we've had to get used to, whether it's using online video conferencing, in personal as well as work, that won't disappear. It will pair back, but that has been accelerated to a huge amount, and obviously that has massive implications for data storage, for network infrastructure. Um, online shopping, you know, that the, the acceleration in terms of people who wouldn't normally use online shopping having to use it again. We'll see that pair back a little bit when life gets back to normal, but it certainly won't go back to pre-COVID. So the acceleration of the uptake in digital services, digital technology, Peloton. I mean, who'd have thought that sitting there on, on a little static bike in your house would become the new big thing? Mm -hmm. You know, that, that again, people will go back to gyms, but they're not going to get rid of that technology. Again, the implications for the infrastructure with the um, enormous uptake mm -hmm. of home gyms, it, 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 it's vast. You know, the, the implications going forward, even when it becomes a bit more normal and more face-to-face, -face, we're not going to go back to pre 1920? Pre-2020 levels. I mean, that makes sense. There's also this study from McKinsey that showed that we've kind of evolved seven to nine years um, in terms of digital adoption. So we're actually not living in 2021. We are living in 2028, 20, 2030. Um, and it's not going to change much than anything further. And then Alex, from a, an European perspective. Yeah, so I, mean, I think just one thing we said really that, that everything that's happened over the last year you know, the fact we've all moved to going and using online video you know, for, for conferences, for calling, for, for meetings, and as Nicky said, for personal life, and the online shopping again, you know, Nicholas absolutely right, we're, never, we're not going back. You know, this is going to be a form of the new normal, um, because whatever happens, we're not gonna go back to all commuting into our offices and working in the way that we did. Um, we, may, we may do some of that, but we won't do all of it. We, the, the world has changed, and it, it will stay changed. Hmm. Yeah, it's definitely going, not going back there. Um, and I said you were the CEO of I Accelerate, you're also the CEO of IX Africa. Chairman, um, chairman, yeah. chairman, sorry. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 you're not taking much balls here. I'm not carrying um, a cab for everything. <laughs> 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 uh, but uh, well, where I was going to go with it, like you are across several markets, two very interesting markets as well, Russia and Africa. Um, give us your view of what's been disrupted in the data center space. So what Nicholas, uh, I don't know what Alex has been saying, it's exploding. It's exploding, so we're seeing an acceleration of decision making as well. Instead of having to pop out to the site and have a look and kick the tires and then go to the headquarters in Santa Clara or wherever, 
uh, and have discussions, it's all on Zoom. And, uh, and this starts happening you know, really quickly. So we're, we're seeing an explosion on, uh, on the whole take up. And uh, you know, Moscow has just been overwhelmed with, with demand. Um, and that's both from, in Russia, it's interesting because you see the whole uh, Russia cloud verticals. So you know, you've got some big cloud verticals like Ozone, which is on NASDAQ, it's like 11 billion market cap now. It's raised in 600 million, so it's investing in Russia now. So you've got some of these you know, more unlikely uh, companies, you know, like Nicholas mentioned Peloton, you know, more unlikely companies suddenly popping up and becoming enormous mm. users of, of data center capacity. Mm. Yeah, exactly. I do think though, sorry to, but, but there is a downside to all of this as well from what the guys just said there about that acceleration and the, the quicker decision making. Brilliant, quicker decision making, but I think we might get bitten bottom a little bit down the line because some of this was, was so rushed. Yes. We're so yeah. hurried yeah. that the infrastructure decisions, very key decisions for larger companies, smaller companies, were made at speed. And I do think maybe over the next 18 months we'll see a little bit of that well, come to the fore that needs sort of re-engineering. That's the, yeah, that's the thing in the industry because what you have is you have cycles. So everybody's suddenly super optimistic. Gosh, I need to grab that land. I need those 8 megawatts. I need those 10 megawatts. Leroy, Jane, go and secure me some real estate here. Then they secure it and they say, uh, then they go to the IT team and say, yeah, I've got you 8 megawatts. So, don't actually need that much. Uh, so there will be probably a digestion yeah. period yeah. Yeah. while everything can I think we'll see it within 18 months. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. well, why are you saying that just for the quotation? I mean, the whole, the whole across the whole, the hyperscalers as well, but mm -hmm. the infrastructure as a whole. Yeah, because the other could be yeah, yeah, the whole the whole yeah. caboodle, or looking at it in a holistic um, internet infrastructure package or IT infrastructure package, I think there will be pain points along the whole thing where yeah. where it, it needs to come back a little bit. But I think it'll be 18 months before we see the... And, and, that, and that change won't necessarily be bad. I mean, it's a, you know, it could be good change. Yeah. It's just, yeah, it's just, it's just an evolution. Yeah. And evolution. it's something that companies need to be aware of, of not yeah. just suddenly look at some of these analyst forecasts and go, well, this is where it is. It's like, I do think there Well, there is a wall of capital at the moment desperately trying to find places to put yeah. money. And, and, you know, if you, you know, go out into... In, I don't know, to Mayfair tomorrow and wave a flag saying, I'm doing dark fibre in rural England. Here's my money. Yeah, yeah. 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 have it. That's right. I mean, you just take it. And that, that, is, that is going to be a problem. Mm -hmm. Other measures. Do you think part of the problem is, though, we're so silent? Because, again, you can't do that in a bubble. You need to be working with the server manufacturers, with the ME people within the facilities, with the network people, and the lab, a global or even a European mm -hmm. R&D fund that looks at all of that, the industry as a whole, would lead to leaps and bounds in that. Your clients are saying, your client is saying, I've got an extremely strict service level agreement. Yeah. If you deviate from one percent from that, I'm going to hit you with a fifty percent fine. So you think, okay, I'm just going to. I'm go just going to do it the way it's supposed to be done. That's going to be my yeah. next point. Well, I'm going to financial services. Yeah, I know, but that's precisely the point. Is you know everybody's signed up to SLAs that they're, that they're terrified of change, yeah. and as an industry, we're terrified of change. But we have to change. We're yeah. also terrified um, of saying when things go wrong as well. And I know you know the yeah. Ansys um, initiative, DSO, which is that anonymous reporting system for data center outages. Bloody brilliant idea. Yeah, brilliant. Based on you know yeah. airline. Yeah. I am I don't know what you mean, I've never had an outage ever in, in any of my data centers. But, but, but oh. do you know, I'm absolutely gobsmacked that it's anonymous reporting yeah. that more companies haven't signed up for that yeah. because the learning from it, and that could be something yeah. else that then goes into better ways of doing something and bring the sustainability into it. But until people think, work together, I, we're a little bit I agree, stuck. But, I, but I think, I think, I think we're, 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 we're in danger of, of, of losing sight of one thing. A data centre is an entity in its own right. Yes, the service manufacturers need to address the problems that they cause. Um, but, but actually, we can do this as data centres builders, operators and developers on our own. We can make facilities much, much more efficient, much more sustainable Absolutely. on our own. Yes, we want to show. If we do that, we'll show the server manufacturers that actually they've got to get their act in order. But imagine if they all work together on a solution and all of it together. They never will. That's the whole thing. I would love to see it happen though, because I think that's the only way to sustainability. But I think we're going through a cycle now where the bankers are very much involved in the industry and the buyers are, to a certain extent, the volume buyers are relatively limited in number. And so what's happening is this is perfecting down to very much a financial model. It's an Excel mm -hmm, absolutely. In these days, in which case the the uh, room for innovation has disappeared because there's just no spare capex to do anything anything out of the ordinary. So it's gone into a very very refined model. It's a kind of one size fits all, and we'll have to have a little bit of a revolution to to move. Mm -hmm. Which I, 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 I totally agree with you there. Uh, 
Um, but I still say because I like to disagree with you. <laughs> and you've been disagreeing with me for 20 odd years. Exactly. Don't stop now. I'm not doing. Um, but, but, well, there's so much I can pick up on this. I'm being familiar. But uh, picking up maybe on the, on the money being invested, especially in the US and Western Europe, uh, we now have an average of about $10 billion being invested a month this year so far. Um, I mean, where are we going to go from, from here? Because um, I know there's a lot of consolidation happening, I know there's a lot of brands out there um, looking for buyers. But um, are you one of them? I'm <laughs> running <laughs> <laughs> two processes at the moment. I'm raising money in Kenya and I'm raising money in, uh, in Russia. And my money yeah. raising in Russia, we were saying, you know, we'll be happy with uh, this number, with X, uh, if we raise 100 million on X, and we're about 1.5 X now at the moment in valuation. So, we're, you know, the interest is strong. Uh, I've only just started raising money in, in Kenya for my business there, and that's going to be super, super exciting. But those are crazy way out markets. You know, if you're raising money in Western Europe, it's probably really easy. Uh, well, yes and no, you'd think that, but part of the problem is, a lot of the investors that certainly I'm speaking to at the moment, they they, they, they don't want to just come in and invest as, as an investor, they, they want to buy. Right. They want to own. Okay. They want to, and I don't think yeah. that is healthy for the market overall, yeah. particularly the amount of money that is splashing around there. I, I want a, a ready up and running business, don't have to do anything to it, don't want to, I just want, X amount of guaranteed returns over a 10 year period. Um, and of course, then you hit problems like EBIT does are through the roof at the moment, so it becomes too expensive to do yeah. that. Yeah. So so I I think that is blocking innovation. No, I, 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 I absolutely agree with you. I think I think I think one of the problems that we've got in in Europe generally and, 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 and in the Western world is that there's been too much money. It's become very easy. Now the investors want something, you know, they, they they're seeing the industry as something which it's safe money. So they want to save yeah. businesses, and, yeah. they want to, and they want to go and put in, as you say, they want to know a business is up and running, they want to return on their investment straight away, they want to guarantee it. They don't want to do anything to it. Like, they don't absolutely. want to make it more sustainable. They absolutely. don't want to make it. And that's, and that's bad for the industry. Absolutely. Um, be, be, and, and again, I mean, I, you know, I, I was in India last year uh, before the pandemic, um, <laughs> a week. Um, <laughs> um, and, and, and it was really interesting to see what's happening in India, because in India, where money is more venture capital, Driven and, and there's a lot of money around for, for yes. data centers in, in India at the moment, and the innovation is there. You know, you're seeing though that innovation that, that I was talking about, yeah. looking at different ways of doing things, not necessarily traditional cooling and power, etc. etc. That innovation is there, mm. and that's what's got to happen to this industry, but it's got to happen everywhere. It, 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 you know, the European model is either going to die on its own feet because it doesn't change. And, if, and all of these emerging markets are going to change, and they are going to get the the, the, the innovation, and they are going to get going to get what they need. So the European market then just dies on its feet, or it's going to have to change, and that's going to be really, really painful. But it will change, and it has changed in the past. I mean, when I spoke, I agree that we, there is a lot of stock out there across Europe in those markets, the flat markets, yeah. and, and any any um, second tier that has got a long history. There are buildings there that are practically empty, that run maybe for one or two clients, that are not fit for purpose anymore. I would love to see those being used to do that experimentation, to do the rebirth, to do all of that. The big companies, the Equinixes, the Digital Realties, the Cyrus Ones, have a sub-brand, you know, I don't know, yeah. co-location oh, by yeah. Equinix instead yeah. of an Equinix. So you've got that Equinix guarantee that it's going to work, yeah. but you can make it more niche for certain things, or you can be more, look, this is our flagship in terms of you know, sustainability, but rather think, than these think, buildings just sitting there and but I think dying. A, you're, you're making a, a, a really valid point about the, about the other buildings. Forget Flat D, well, that's, that's kind of done anyway, but, but there are 2,500 operators in Europe. Um, and some of them are tiny. Tiny, we have any tenants. And, and what they've but what they've got is they've got all these data centers that have been fitted out, but they're twenty years old. Mm -hmm. they, they, and they don't have the money because they don't have the clients. They don't have the money to reinvest and turn them into something else. And the investors that's aren't interested in those. Investors investors aren't, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But that's where the bigger players could come along and do some innovation yeah. at really low cost to them and make sure it's sustainable. Um, I'll go back to the equity today in a second, especially because of you two, but sustainability, do we believe the interest is going to be 100% clean by 2030 or not? Like everyone yes. wants sustainability. I'd I I love to say in, yes. I'd love to in Russia, but you know, I've got nuclear and I've got gas, mm. and I don't know if I can get enough green by then. Mm. So in, in a good Western manner, I'd say of course, mm. uh, because that's what we all say, because we're optimistic. The reality is, you know, we've still got a massive problem with storage. 
and uh, you know, and if there's no wind and there's no sun for a couple of weeks, then uh, you're not going to be yeah. sustainable. Yeah, it's, 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 in some countries, it's much easier than others. Mm. You know, I, I think you need to take that with. I, I don't want to say best efforts because that sounds a bit pathetic, but. Mm. Uh, but you know, it is, you, you know, you, you, you well, we have, might try. No, but you know, the underlying, again, it's the underlying infrastructure that is there in place in the country at the time. You can't just go, I'm a data center company, we're going to be 100% green. No. But, if you but, don't but, have that but infrastructure. But what you have to target, what you have to target, we've got to go for Yeah, and you've got to drive drive towards it. And, and I think it's really important. We, you know, and I, I, think, I think what will happen, we haven't really spoken about edge data centers per se this morning, but, mm. um, but I think what will happen is, is that edge will become more normal. Um, but edge is where the innovation will come. It's not going to come in the mainstream because they can't afford it. The investors won't want the investors it. Investors don't want that. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And, and indeed, the companies don't want it. But either. at the moment, the, the, you know, if, if you look at it philosophically in, in, in our industry, and I guess this is the same in most industries, the least innovative companies have the highest innovation PR budget. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you know, Microsoft can dip a little container under the sea, yeah. and, and it gets on, on the news everywhere. But some guys in ETH and Zurich doing some really groovy stuff, well, nobody's ever going to know. Well, the guys that are building and they're using the waste heat to, to fuel entire new development, social housing yeah. projects, you know, you see in Scandinavia, yeah. that sort of stuff is, is innovative mm. and it is at least making it, it's, it's not yeah, wasted. But, it, it's, but we don't see very much of that. We, no, I mean, I, I mean, I find it incredible that. that <laughs> No, no, I mean, Kai, Alex, and Nicola, thanks so much for coming. Um, thank you Good for luck with the new publication. Yeah, I'm looking forward to reading it. And the first thing in person, oh, you're going to be a critic, aren't you? <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's nice just to be back in person and doing this kind of thing. Absolutely. Um, thank you for inviting us. Yeah. Oh, you're welcome. We'll yeah. do this a lot of times. <laughs> um, and here's a special segment now, which I hope you will like. Congratulations to the Tech Capital team on their launch. I'm really looking forward to the commentary of not only the data center industry, but also of the wider technology sector. Also great to hear that the publication will be independent and impartial. Congratulations to the Tech Capital team for the launch of your new and exciting publication that will feature articles on business strategy and investments, as well as up-to-date entry news and trends and in-depth interviews. I'm also looking forward to all of your commentary that will be impartial and objective. We are nearly 8 billion people on the planet. Our lives are digital. Your phone, your car, your work. From football to cricket. That song you keep on streaming. The latest cinema blockbuster. Or the online game you keep on playing. Healthcare and emergency services are digital first. Hundreds of millions of children learn online. Our power grids depend on digital. So do nuclear plants and oil rigs. Defence systems don't work without it. The factories producing thousands of cars every day. The manufacturing plants generating critical machinery. Digital is powering change, an innovation platform for generations. A change for the better a change for the environment. A new digital era is fast approaching. Computing at the speed of light, nanotechnology, space exploration, and this new age is greener. Digital helps deliver sustainability. Digital enables inclusion and equality. Digital is the tech capital. We are going to lead the narrative in a sector changing the world's geoeconomics. You lead, we report. From business strategy to investments, from the boardroom directly to your screen, from the trading floor to the world, we are bold, independent, innovative. We are the tech capital. You lead, we report. We embark on a journey, not on a vessel or a ship here on the Thames, but on a digital landmark. The tech capital is born today with a clear vision of tomorrow. Not just our tomorrow, but this new economy powered by digital. At Tech Capital, we strive to be a better company for our co-workers, customers and partners, whilst foster, fostering and encouraging diversity and inclusivity. 
as our mission to provide authentic content and a genuine online experience to our global readership, generating insights and information for the complex world in which they are engaged. We hope you have enjoyed this broadcast and are looking forward to leading the market with us by your side. To keep up to date with the latest, do follow the Tech Capital on all your favorite social media channels and subscribe to the newsletters so you're the first to know what is happening in our industry. From me and the team at the Tech Capital, thank you and see you at www.techcapital.com. Don't forget, you lead, we report. Bye for now.